Hello everyone and welcome back to this lesson dedicated to emergency plans for cultural heritage institutions. In this part, we, all, we are talking about the drawing up uh, of the emergency plan and all the different work phases for its implementation. We have seen the uh, phases, the first four phases in the last sec um, lessons. Um, first of all, the gathering of all the relevant data and information uh, about the museum security. Uh, secondly, the flow analysis of the museum. Thirdly, the risk analysis. And lastly, the actual phase of drawing up the emergency plan. In this phase, this, the, the fifth phase is the monitoring and updating of the emergency plan. And as we saw earlier, writing an emergency plan uh, for cultural heritage should be uh, not perceived as a point of arrival, but as a process made of continual updating and training. Climate change has never threatened human life and landscapes more than today, putting cultural heritage at serious risk. In such a circumstance where risks multiply and the natural envir environment suddenly changes, it is essential to be able to adapt our knowledge assets and move towards a constant renewal of our ability to respond to emergencies. Furthermore, consider the speed with which the collections of a museum change or are enriched. Every mutation in the overall condition of the museum must be the starting point for a survey of risks and uh, on one's ability to respond to it. So for these reasons, it's very, very important that the emergency plan is updated um, at least once a year. And here in this slide, I have put some of the reasons why it could be useful to update it because there can be changes in the risk profile of the area because maybe uh, some serious um, disaster happened in that area or changes in personnel in the personnel of the museum of, for example, new acquisitions or new uh, long-term loans in the collection or, for example, unpredicted uh, processes of degradation of the contemporary art and so on. So generally in every discipline, it is advisable to keep constantly updated uh, on the advancements of the field. However, in the emer emergency management sector, it is more important than ever as it needs to endless, endlessly examine new opportunities on the market to inform the collection salvage procedures. So for this reason, it is necessary to provide at least annually a theoretical course on risk management for cultural heritage, as well as management of cultural heritage emergencies to give the personnel the tools to be able to respond to an emergency as well as a practical exercise to try to put into practices into practice the procedures that have been identified inside the emergency plan. Once the first draft of the emergency plan has been completed, its effectiveness is tested with an emergency simulation. This type of emergency simulation is fully operational and involves the implementation of all the procedures identified in the design phase, including the evacuation of the works and the involvement of the fire brigade. During the simulation, uh, it is always advisable to move objects that can simulate the dimensions, material, and weight of the chosen works without moving the collection itself to avoid subjecting it to damage during transport. So for this reason, it's really important to identify some simulacra that can be used for the evacuation exercise. Being an operational simulation to all intents and purposes, it is necessary to procure the personal 
protective equipment suitable for carrying out emergency procedures for all the personnel involved in the exercise. Um, the PPEs must be included inside the emergency kits that should be located in strategic areas of the building. Uh, the emergency kits uh, must also contain all the materials necessary for the packaging and handling of the artworks, as well as devices and materials that could be useful for cleaning the premises and restoring our normal situation uh, in the affected areas. It will be then necessary to identify the emergency scenario that you intend to implement for the exercise. It is good to think of a daily situation simulating the usual positions of the employees inside the museum. In this way, the test will be as responsive as possible to the reality uh, of the building. In this phase of work, communication and collaboration with the local authorities and the local fire brigade are essential. So it is always advisable to organize the event in detail, notifying the emergency teams well in advance. And it is also good to notify the museum's stakeholders involved, uh, involving all interested parties. But let's now see why it is important to practice frequently emergency exercises. First of all, carrying out frequent exercises allows you to get a clear and precise idea of the procedures to be implemented in the event of an emergency. Depending on the different scenarios, the different response methods that have been developed in the emergency plan can be tested and all those procedures that are not effective in the testing phase can be corrected. The exercises are also a very useful moment for sharing procedures, both internally among the museum staff and with the emergency teams, so civil protection and fire brigade. It is always advisable during the exercise phase to involve the command of local firefighters and civil protection to ensure that they are informed on the best activities to implement to save the collection in case of emergency. The second objective of, uh, develop, uh, of um, delivering an exercise is to define the times for the emergency response. During the exercises, in fact, it is good to time all the activities. In this way, it will be possible to accurately obtain the museum's reactions times to an emergency. This procedure uh, is also extremely useful for identifying all those activities which, being too time-consuming, are not suitable for the answer and cannot be implemented in specific cases. The third objective is to um, create networks. An emergency simulation, in addition to being an important disaster response planning and control activity, is also an opportunity for sharing and raising awareness among the community on the risk issues to which cultural heritage is subjected. Furthermore, a good communication strategy in times of crisis allows the museum to maintain the engagement of its public and involve them in subsequent operation to restore the optimal conditions of the collection. Testing one's communication skills in the emergency phase can be uh, therefore a matter of real importance to be put into practice in the simulation phase. The first objective on, of an emergency simulation is to stimulate the teamwork. The exercises are a fundamental moment of comparison and exchange within the staff team of a museum. It is a moment in which everyone can get involved and can give value to their personal and professional contribution. In general, good collaboration can only be achieved with a good distribution of tasks and responsibilities. 
it is good that everyone knows exactly what their contribution can be and where their responsibilities end up. Last but not least, practicing is essential to identify all those elements that have escaped during the risk assessment process. No matter how thorough the risk assessment proce process is, in fact, it is always probable that some details may remain forgotten or not foreseen. For the more particular emergency scenarios often lead to having to imagine out of the ordinary response activities. For this reason, the exercises are also fundament a fundamental moment to stimulate the divergent and creative thinking of the museum staff and to imagine effective solutions that can be integrated into the emergency plan. That's it for this part. Thank you very much for your attention and I will see you in the last part.